This is part 80 of ASP.NET MVC tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss string length attribute. String length attribute is present in system.componentModel.data annotations namespace and this attribute is used to enforce minimum and maximum length of characters that are allowed in a data field. Let's understand this with an example. We'll be using this table TBL employee for this demo. I'll have the SQL script available on my blog in case if you need it. Now, based on this table TBL employee, let's go ahead and add ADU.NET Entity Data Model. So let's flip to Visual Studio. Let's right click on this models folder, add a new item, select data under install templates, ADU.NET Entity Data Model, and let's call this sample data model. Click add. We want to generate our model from the database, so let's select that option, click next. And we want our connection string to be saved as sample db context within the web.config file. Click Next. So this is going to connect to the database and retrieve all the tables, views and stored procedures. Let's expand tables and select our table TBL employee and we want our models to be living in models namespace. Let's click Finish. So at this point this should generate an entity with name TBL employee but let's change the name to employee and let's build our solution so that this employee entity is compiled. Now let's add a controller and let's name it home controller and let's use this template MVC controller with read slash write actions and views using entity framework and our model class is going to be employee entity class that we just generated and the data context class is going to be sample DB context. Let's click add. At this point this should add home controller and all the required views. So let's build our solution and navigate to the index section within the home controller. At this point we don't have any validations in place whatsoever. Let's click edit and we get a compilation error and that compilation error is due to a scripts section on edit view. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. We'll discuss the scripts section in a later video session. And while we are here, let's use a div tag and set the style attribute. Let's set font family to area. And let's move this closing div tag to the end. Let's save these changes. And let's go ahead and refresh this view. And notice that at the moment we are passing um, employee ID 1 to this edit action, which means we are editing an employee whose ID is 1. Now, we don't have any validations in place. Now let's say I want to enforce a validation and that validation should ensure that this name property of the employee class has got at least five characters and the maximum length that's allowed is 10 characters. So minimum should be five characters and maximum is 10 characters. And to enforce this validation, all we need to do is we need to decorate that name property within the employee class with this string length attribute and then specify the minimum length and maximum length as you can see here. But then if you look at the state of our application at the moment, we have the sample data model and within that we have the sample data model.designer.cs file. So this is an auto-generated file and within that file we have got, you know, when we expand this entities, we have a class called employee here, the employee entity class. And then when we expand this region, primitive properties region, within that we have this name property. So can I go ahead and decorate this name property with string length attribute? Yes, I can go ahead and do that. Uh, by the way, string length is present in system.componentModel.data annotations namespace. So we need to bring that in. But then the problem is if we decorate this name property here, you know, this is a custom change that we are making to the name property. But then later, for some reason, if this auto-generated file is regenerated again. So if we were to, um, you know, regenerate the ADO.NET entity data model, we will lose all our customizations. That's why it's not a good idea to make any changes to this auto-generated file. Now, this employee class, if you look at this, 
it's created as a partial class which means we can add another partial class called employee and then we can make all customizations to that partial class because later when we regenerate um, you know the adio.net entity data model again that class wouldn't be affected only this file will be regenerated so we won't lose our changes so let's go ahead and add another class file and let's name this employee So this is going to be a partial class. So let's go ahead and use partial modifier. And then I'm going to create another class. And that class is not going to be a partial class. And I'm going to call this employee metadata. Okay, so basically this class is going to contain the metadata for employee class. And that's why I have named it like that. Or you can give it any meaningful name you want. Now, I'm going to link these two classes using this attribute, metadata type attribute. And this attribute is present in system.componentModel.data annotations namespace. So let's go ahead and bring that in as well. So system.componentModel.data annotations. And then let's link these two classes using metadata type attribute. So obviously we need to specify the type of the class which contains metadata. So I'm going to use type of keyword to get the type of this class, employee metadata. So let's copy the name and then let's move it there. All right. So now let's declare our name property. So name properties of type string. So we are going to decorate this property within this employee metadata class with that string length attribute. Okay, string length. And look at this. This has got in you know, a one parameter maximum length. So let's go ahead and set that. So maximum length, let's say it's 10 characters. And then to set the minimum um, length we can use these named parameters so there's one named parameter called minimum length so let's go ahead and set that minimum length equals 5 so let's build our solution let's go back to this view so let's go back to the index view and then let's click edit okay now let's say you know let's include one character in the name and then let me click save and see what's going to happen look at that I get that validation um, message back the field name must be a string with minimum length of 5 and maximum length of 10 characters so we get the validation as expected now if I try to include a name that's more than 10 characters let's look at what's going to happen look at that we get the same message back okay now for some reason if you don't like this error message you can customize that as well so here you can specify there is another named parameter called error message so you can specify your custom error message that you want to be displayed all right now on the other hand if we give it you know the right data you know this string you know meets that requirement it, le it is at least minimum five characters and not more than 10 characters so when i click save it works as expected but then there is another problem here. Look at this. When I blank out name and when I click save, you know, it's accepting the name. So it's not enforcing, um, you know, the rule that this property is required. Okay. So that's not the job of this string length attribute. That's the job of the required attribute. So if you want to make sure that this name property is also required, then go ahead and decorate that with the required attribute. So let's build the solution. Let's click edit. And then obviously at the moment, name for that employee with ID is equal to one will be saved as now. And then look at this. When I try to save it, we get an error. The name field is required. So at this point, name field is required and the minimum characters is five and maximum characters should be should not be more than 10. Okay. So let's click save. Look at that, we are able to save it. 
So string length attribute is present in system.componentModel.data annotations namespace. String length attribute verifies that a string is of certain length, but does not enforce that the property is required. If you want to enforce that the property is required, then we have to use required attribute. There are other data validation attributes as well, which we will be discussing in our upcoming videos. In our next video, we'll discuss regular expression and range validation attributes. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.